So CLL um, is the most common leukemia uh, seen in Western countries. Uh, it is a disease of the elderly with a median age of diagnosis of about 72 years. So uh, what comes along with that are patients that have um, significant comorbidities, um, making it difficult to treat them with some of our more aggressive forms of therapy, some of uh, the, the treatments that include cytotoxic chemotherapy. Historically, our treatment options were fairly limited for this older population. Um, we would use single agent chemotherapy agents with limited efficacy. Um, orally administered chlorambucil was a standard of care for the more elderly and frail population. Um, uh, additionally, we occasionally used single agent monoclonal antibodies really without uh, a whole lot of benefit. So while this can be uh, an indolent disorder for the patients who did require therapy, our options just weren't very good. So the Resonate 2 trial was conducted um, to essentially compare uh, a newer treatment option, uh, oral abrutinib, uh, compared against what was considered uh, one standard of, of care for elderly patients at the, um, when the study was designed, single agent oral chlorambucil. Uh, what we learned uh, last year at the initial report with a median follow-up of about 18 months is that indeed, as, as expected, abrutinib was much more efficacious than chlorambucil. And um, I think most investigators would agree that wasn't um, a huge surprise. Uh, it, was, it provided a much better progression-free survival, um, but it also interestingly, there was an overall survival benefit at the initial analysis, meaning that um, at early time points, more of the patients randomized to chlorambucil were, were dying. They were dying early. Um, so the, the initial indication was that brutinib uh, was a more efficacious treatment, but also was very well tolerated. The update we provided this year had a median follow-up of 29 months. So uh, a, a chance to look at the um, durability as well as long-term safety uh, in um, a elderly population now getting first-line therapy. And what we learned is that abrutinib, not surprisingly, continues to perform better than chlorambucil, but um, really does have pretty notable efficacy in this population when used as first-line therapy. Uh, we found that at two years, 89% of patients were without progression uh, or death. Um, in addition, 95% of patients were still alive after, uh, at this time point. 79% um, of patients remained on the drug, which really speaks to its uh, tolerance in this older population. So, you know, what we learned at the end of all of this is that abrutinib really does look like it's an important treatment option, treatment option for um, older patients uh, with CLL and seems to be well tolerated uh, in, again, this elderly population. One other piece of information that we learned that I found really interesting from the Resonate 2 data was um, setting the stage. We, we already know that abrutinib works really well in high-risk patients. Those who have um, a molecularly more complex disease, disease that can progress more quickly and frankly kill these patients. Um, but what we learned is in this study the patients with deletion 11Q, who often have uh, a much poorer prognosis, really seem to be responding especially well to abrutinib. And in fact, the progression-free survival curve for the abrutinib-treated patients, the ones who have deletion 11Q, looks to be trending even a little bit better than the curve without deletion 11Q. Um, that could be an artifact of um, short follow-up and um, a, a downfall of any sort of subset analysis, but now this has been observed across three different randomized studies. So it, to, me, to me, it really suggests that in that high-risk population, abrutinib may be the ideal treatment. Obviously, we need more follow-up uh, over time, but that's, uh, I thought, 
um, a notable result. And Dr. Tom Kipps is presenting a poster summarizing the results from the three randomized studies with, with, that, um, with that data.